The next thing I did though, they had um, a spiritualist development class. And what that was, was they, you could go to this class and the lady guiding it, uh, she was a spiritualist medium, mm -hmm. she had her own uh, contact with the spirit world uh, and they all had Indian names. Hers was Running Water or something like that, I remember. <laughs> and she assigned us each a spirit guide. And, uh, and each meeting would open up where her spirit guide, Running Water, would come uh, into the room from the back mm -hmm. and come up the aisle and get on the stage and sit beside her. Because this is an invisible person. <laughs> see it, but but uh, this person would come and she would run down and help, because it was an old spirit meeting, mm -hmm. obviously. She would help it up on the stage, you know. And pretty soon after a couple of meetings, other people were running to help this, this spirit up onto the stage. And they're all acting as if it's real. And I began feeling, boy, you know, I'm getting to feel like it's real too. So I just stopped <laughs> right at that point. <laughs> I love that. So uh, you're you're actually drawing a really direct line from your background and interest in magic to your skepticism. And I love hearing the story about the spiritualist church. It tracks almost exactly James Randi's experience at age 14, where he stumbled in a spiritualist church in Toronto and saw the minister doing a Q&A act. And he was so enraged with a kind of righteous indignation that he marched right up to the pulpit and exposed the guy's magic tricks. Of course, he was arrested. And, you know, so at 14, at 16 in your case, it's that magic and skepticism connection. Do you think that's a necessary connection? In other words, there are all sorts of magicians out there who aren't motivated to go out and use their background in magic to advance critical thinking. There are even some magicians who believe. Uh, there, you know, mm -hmm. there are some famous magicians who supported the reality of Uri Geller. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So uh, being a magician isn't a necessary uh, or sufficient condition to be a good skeptic. But in your case, it definitely fueled it. Well, and also in Randy's case, mm -hmm. Randy gets credit, and Randy actually sometimes talks as if it's because he's a magician. Mm -hmm. But Randy is more than that. Randy is a Renaissance type of person. He has other kinds of background. He's a very smart guy, and uh, he has other talents. And it's not because he's a magician necessarily that he's good at what he does. He has other talents as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but but you're explaining your interest in parapsychology through magic. Yes, you're saying because it, maybe if you weren't into magic as a young psychology student at Boston University, you wouldn't have, uh, or or at at Harvard eventually, or when you wrote um, your you published your first paper 50 years ago, maybe you wouldn't have gone in that direction had you not the magic background. Oh sure, I'm, that's probably very likely so. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, but I, I, I must admit that my, as far back as I can remember, and that remember, it's, seven is still pretty young, and it's a long time ago for me, um, I can't ever remember not being a skeptic. Mm. I do remember living in Italy for a while. I lived for 14 years in Italy. Uh, I was on the, uh, teaching at the University of Bologna. And uh, I do remember having some thoughts that, you know, I missed out a lot in life. These people going to the, the, the pageant and the ceremonies at mm -hmm. the churches and stuff like that, mm -hmm. something I missed out on. Maybe I missed something. Uh, so I did have that little pang of, uh, just a little bit, uh, that maybe I missed out on something, not having, having ever believed anything. Mm -hmm. I, I never can remember any moment in my life where I ever believed in anything so that, that, was, that I couldn't test by evidence. You're admitting that you basically started out as a skeptic. Uh, you, you never went through this uh, you never went through the, a period of, in your life where you earnestly believed, ex examined the evidence, and then changed your mind. No, you started out as a skeptic. I always was, as far as I know. Yeah. You, you, pu you published your uh, first paper on parapsychology in 1957 in the Journal of the American Statistical Association. Uh, most of your work as a skeptic, really resulting from that and all the other papers that you published, put you in this kind of no man's land as a skeptic between the, call them the knee-jerk skeptics, the people who dismiss these claims out of hand, and the unduly credulous parapsychologists. You were in neither of those camps. I mean, you were, ardent, you were seriously a skeptic, but you, at least at the time, considered the questions worth asking, and in an open-minded, fair-minded way, you looked at the evidence. 
Um, you, all, you offered a kind of corrective to the skeptics community. Uh, did you ever get much flack from skeptics for being too, uh, too nice to the believers? Well, actually, I wasn't that nice a skeptic at the, re at the beginning. <clears throat> but that was your uh, reputation I as had, it developed. I, yeah. Best I can remember, I was like other skeptics when I first began. There was a lot of fun putting down those guys <laughs> and showing that they were a bunch of idiots. Mm. Uh, and at some point, I did change. But I know it must have been fairly early because when I wrote that paper in 1957, mm -hmm. I actually was invited to do it by the editor of the, William Wallace, who's the editor of the Journal of the American Statistical Association. There was a big controversy going on at that time over the work by Sol and Bateman on, um, uh, on, on this uh, psychic they had been testing mm -hmm. for, for quite a while. And um, at this, that time, this was considered the strongest evidence for parapsychology. A guy named ba Basil Shackleton and later a lady named Ma Mary Stewart. They just had two these, these two subjects, but these people were consistent. Experiment after experiment, they could produce their results, which was very unusual. And so this was the greatest evidence there was, and there was a big controversy over it at the time. And so the editor of the, the Journal of the American Statistical Association, he knew me as a statistician, as a magician, and as a psychologist. And he said, those are the three components that are, that, that are just right for someone to be able to unravel what's going on here. Mm -hmm. But you didn't set out to debunk it. You wanted no, to no. look into the research. He asked yeah. me to do that, to, to yeah. try and settle the issue once and for all, because had been actually science had devoted two issues to it, you know. And um, so I had always been a skeptic of parapsychology. I believe it was just a lot of bunk and, uh, and, and that they, 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 they didn't do good experiments. And I trusted, because my, my mentors were Martin Gardner. He was, you know, my mentor. I'm a good friend, and, uh, mm -hmm. but person I trusted. Uh, and uh, there was Randy at that time even, and other people. All my information about what parapsychologists were doing was secondhand. Mm -hmm. I never really looked at their literature ever before that. So, but when I got this invitation in 57, I was asked to try to settle this big issue. I went back and read all Ryan's work. Mm -hmm. it took me a little while, and I read um, uh, Solon Bateman's work and so on. And I was surprised. I was absolutely dumbfounded because they were doing better experiments than they were being, you know, they were being criticized for the wrong thing. They kind of got a bad rap among the yeah. skeptics. They were better and, statisticians. Yeah, yeah. They were better statisticians than they were given credit for. Mm -hmm. In fact, they were more sophisticated than the critics were in the statistics part of it. They, were, they could do some good experiments and they did some bad experiments, but it was better than what, what I had been led to believe. But even by my friends I trusted. It turned out that the friends I trusted and the sources I trusted would, would pick the bad experiments and, and ignore the, they didn't know the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the good experiments in parapsychology actually were pretty sophisticated. Uh, there was things wrong with it, but it, you were going to attack it, you had to attack it at a more sophisticated level. Mm -hmm. And not just dismiss it out of hand That's as right. a bunch of... Because they were trying to be scientific, unlike Uri Geller and, and the astrologers and so on, these people were trying to produce evidence according to scientific standards. They were trying to use the best statistics, the best experimental controls, and so on. So I felt at that time that they should be handled at that level. And I got into what I now think was a mistake. I got into mm -hmm. this uh, belief that only people who had carefully read their best studies and had the statistical know-how and the experimental know-how had the sufficient background to be a uh, fair critic.